Hi, I'm John McWade. I'm the publisher and creative director of Before and After. And what we do here is teach graphic design. Maybe a better way to say it would be that we explain graphic design. It's so much of a journey for you and for us too. We're constantly seeing design in new ways. What we do is point out what works and why, what doesn't work and why, and more important, we show it to you. One of our hallmarks is that we don't just talk about design. Talking about design is like learning about wine by reading the label. What we do is show it from before to after. Because we all learn differently, some by reading, some by watching, some by interacting, we offer before and after in PDF, as a print magazine, in books, and in video. And we also have an interactive forum we call The Grid. What I want to do for the next few minutes is show you a little, at least, of what we do. This little brochure is one of my favorites. We call it the zigzag, and it's so simple. It's just one sheet of paper. This one's legal size. You lop off one edge at an angle, then fold the sheet like an accordion, and it yields these cool little triangle tabs. Lots of bang for the buck. It's super inexpensive, fun to design. This example is a takeout menu, but you can do practically anything with this format. We call this one line design. Turn an old bathtub into a classy cover or salvage a blurry photo. Make something out of nothing by turning a circle into a repeating pattern. There are a million variations. You can change colors. Here are the same circles as outlines. You can use straight lines, dots, tiny illustrations, whatever. Easy, endlessly interesting, and basically free. Before and after covers design principles. These are the universal basics that apply to all design. The idea of figure ground, for example, has to do with how positive and negative spaces interact. In this example, do you see two faces or do you see the vase? Figure ground is most interesting when the negative space becomes part of the design. Equilibrium has to do with our sense of balance, how steady or unsteady we feel. An object that's steady, like the square, is calm, grounded, motionless. An object that's unsteady, whoa, tippy, like the triangle, is full of tension and energy. We get this from nature. A splash of water will form droplets that beat up and come to rest in a circle. That circle is the most placid, steadiest state. The pressure is the same on all sides, so there's no tension in it. When we use the circle in logo design, it's the calm shape that says, we're here, we're settled, we're steady, you can trust us. Before and after illustrates techniques. I think of a technique as how to do something that you'll then do many times. For example, how to crop a series of mug shots. It's not uncommon to see mugs cropped kind of willy-nilly, but there's a right way. Your goal is to have all the mugs the same size and in the same position in their frames. You have to start with the closest cropped image. Crop it like you want, then extend horizontal guides and add the other images. Now here's the trick. Add horizontal guides at eye, chin, and brow level then enlarge or reduce those other mugs to fit the guides. You'll use this on every cropping project you do. A favorite technique is making silhouettes. Take this model. I can't tell if she's bored or just unhappy that the hairstylist didn't show up. We can make something better. Trace her silhouette, give her some good hair, you could often get this from another photo. 
put her top on, color the background, add your copy, and zowie, great result. One thing I like about silhouettes is that they're faceless, which means that your viewer can project herself into the scene. You can use almost any image as your starting point. Color is so important that we deal with it a lot. Color can be complex, but we make it as simple and practical as we can. For example, every color in a photo will automatically coordinate with that photo. So you can make beautiful layouts just by using the colors that are already in the picture. And if you need more than those, and you sometimes will, we'll take you on a trip around the color wheel. Color is pretty amazing, and we cover it from many angles. We show you how to work on a grid. These pages are laid out on a grid with what we call a hang line. Float your head above the hang line, then add the copy and images below it, kind of like hanging clothes on a clothesline. It's easy this way to get results that are good looking, versatile, and easy to repeat. A grid can be very simple. This CD cover is an attractive minimalist design. To transfer its look to the label, make just two guidelines, duplicate the logo, then lower a vertical guide from the edge of the logo and place your text. And while we're making CDs, a variation of that theme is to make the disc label a simpler version of the cover. Just isolate the seashell, center it on the label, and add your text. There's more to it than that, but hey, that's why you need before and after. We do little sprites. Sprites are little tricks, little effects, little ideas that you can use now and then, like how to make one photo look like three, Use the same photo twice. Brighten your name with a picture. Or make a shadow that tells half the story. Type makes awesome artwork that hits three targets with one arrow. Type is a powerful communicator. It has lots of visual presence. And it's a way to get great results for basically no money. Watch this. This is also a CD cover, but it could just as easily be a poster or web display or whatever. Its shape doesn't matter. Place guides, then build a visual texture by repeating your name in various sizes and color values. Looks great. It's fun to do. It works in many type styles and for all kinds of projects. Before and after tackles serious typography too will take you way beyond your default settings and show you how to set perfect book quality type. Size, spacing, kerning, tracking, line lengths, drop caps, footnotes. The key to great type is in its details. Old style numerals, for example. Standard numerals are the height of capital letters and set in a single width, so in columns they line up which is why they're called lining numerals. These are your defaults. But for use in text, you want old style numerals, which have ascenders and descenders and a standard X height, like lowercase characters, so they blend perfectly into a line of type. A ligature is a character made when two or more letters are combined into one. And here's a quiz. When you end a sentence with an italicized word, is the punctuation after it also italicized? If you said yes, you're right. In before and after, you'll find PowerPoint design, business card design, web page design. Here's a simple web page for an artist that's designed to look good small. It's not a half-empty big page. 
and so much more. And of course, we do all of it with makeovers from before to after. Before and after is easy to follow, it's fun, it's practical, and it's for almost everyone, whether you're just starting out or you're well along in your career. Here's one last shoestring project. Just fold open a letter size sheet once, twice, three times. It's not only compact, it fits pocket or purse, but it tells a good looking unfolding story. Can you do it? Sure. We provide full setup specs, sizes, folds, typefaces, photo sources with live links, and colors. So if you love design or know someone who does, Before and After has a lot for you. We've just scratched the surface. Remember, Before and After is available in PDF, in print, in books, in video, on our forum where you can talk to me and the staff and your fellow designers, and in a convenient searchable DVD we call the Master Collection. I'm John McWade.